All right, everyone, remember that it's only far-right, evil, bigoted propaganda that anybody on the left has ever committed a significant crime, especially a violent felony. Uh, out west, there are hundreds of wildfires raging. Some of these are the result of people being just fucking morons, like having gender reveal parties with explosives in dry brushland. Don't you think that maybe that's a bad idea? I think the originator of the gender reveal thing, didn't she weigh in, actually? <laughs> On this and say, hey, enough is enough. You're burning down half the country. When when the person that originates something disowns it and says, cut it out, it's usually it's time to let it go. Let it die is a cultural phenomenon. It was cringy enough to begin with, even before it was causing mass casualty incidents. But uh, Antifa, according to Facebook, which will literally ban you uh, or post block you if you post about this. According to them and the New York Times and, and elements of the FBI on Twitter, I guess, Antifa doesn't cause fires. There's no evidence that they did this. That being said, I've seen actually videos of people starting fires uh, with known far-left tendencies. And I think one of them was BLM, but one of them appears to have been Antifa. And in a couple of other cases, there's not necessarily a political motive. Number one... If I'm a violent extremist, if I'm literally a terrorist, according to the designation of multiple nations, certain states, um, if, if I'm reading manifestos and manuals and material that talks about bomb making and incendiaries and revolution and killing cops, is it really beyond the pale to suggest that during an extended drought, when I'm seeing all the damage done by wildfires, I might decide to burn down a suburban neighborhood with a Zippo? Is that really beyond the pale to suggest that that might be the case? How is it a conspiracy theory to suggest that that could happen? And in some cases, we know Antifa lights fires. They burn cars all the time. Now, of course, a car burning in the middle of Portland is probably not going to start a brush fire 10 miles away in, in, in the scrubland. That being said, if you've got a group that has a proclivity towards incendiaries, uh, the use of arson in a political context... Is it that difficult to imagine a scenario where they will take advantage of atmospheric conditions in order to cause mass panic, um, the movement of people, apparently something like 10% of people in, in the state of Oregon are displaced at the moment because of so many wildfires. They've been evacuated to shelters and stuff. 10% of the population, a huge number of people. Is it really that difficult to believe that a handful of Antifa members got the bright idea, you know what we could do? For 10 bucks worth of, ga of kerosene, we could probably cause millions more in damage. Why don't we fucking do it? Who's going to catch them? They go out there in the middle of the night into the middle of nowhere, light a brush fire and leave. They got plenty of time to get away. Maybe they only displaced 500 people. Maybe it's a little village somewhere out there in the middle of nowhere. They don't have to worry about being shot. They probably don't get caught. You're not going to get footage of it most of the time, but even when we do have footage, I've literally seen it. Andy No has some on his channel. Even when you get footage proving that there's someone with, with blatant political motivation trying to start a fire, if you, if you put it on Facebook, you'll just get banned. And yeah, fuck Facebook, by the way. I'm going to be deleting my account fairly soon, probably. Now that they've switched to a new uh, format that's even less useful than before. It's not even worth logging in. It's not even worth going to the group page. You can't even revert to classic anymore. So what's the point of even fucking being on the platform? I've started removing the Facebook links, actually, if you haven't noticed, uh, in the descriptions of my videos. Because it's just so pointless. It's boomer book anyway. The average age of a person there, they're just old enough to, to have several Antifa children that they have to feed tendies with their trust fund, with daddy's credit card. But yeah, remember, Antifa never does... It's just like uh, when the ADL or SPLC or, or the Democratic Party say that leftists aren't violent, they never do terrorism or something. Well, yeah, I mean, if you get a Antifa aware that the DA in a region isn't going to charge them, or if they do, they've got no bail and can just wander off pending a case that'll never happen because of coronavirus backlogs... Yeah, they can go out and burn things with impunity. Of course, you're not going to get a statistic showing that far-left terrorism caused a billion dollars in damage, which it has. You're not going to see any report on that from the ADL, even if they compiled the data at all. They'll just lie by omission. They'll go based on convictions instead of charges. Look at the charge rates. Now, now you see your real differential, dude. Now look at how many cases were actually prosecuted. How many of those charges actually uh, went to a conviction or an exoneration? How many of these people were exonerated of the charges brought towards them? Some of these charges are probably years old in some of these places. They're never going to get brought forth before a judge. If the judge is there, sometimes the judge is sympathetic too. Oh, well, I'm dismissing this case for lack of evidence. Yeah, I've got video of you stabbing five people, but I'm not convinced. After all, the person does have a mask on. 
Yeah, just ignore the 10 identifying tattoos all over your arms and shit like that. I wouldn't be surprised if there are cases like that in some of these places. Portland is Antifa HQ. Any DA acting in that area is sympathetic towards them. They're not going to get prosecuted. Certainly not going to get convicted. If they did, the judge would probably give them a slap on the wrist. Oh, time served. Yeah, you were in jail overnight. Learn your lesson, boy. Act better in the future. That's what happens. I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if Antifa is starting fires out west. Now, unfortunately, again, if you have a fire starting in a rural area, it's going to be kind of hard for you to tell. Yeah, old Farmer John probably doesn't have five video cameras strung up around the edge of his property. I bet that if you did have rural landowners recording their land more, though, you'd find that humans are involved nine times out of ten in these things. The idea that lightning just started magically spawning hundreds of new fires, that's a little bit out there. Yes, certainly lightning can cause a brush fire. And some of them are accidental, of course. Sparks from the train going by. You know, the rail was a little bit maladjusted. Some sparks flew out. It started a grass fire. The grass fire turned into a brush fire. The brush fire turned into a forest fire. And then we've got to talk about one other element of these fires that, that is also of import. And this one's only semi-political. And that's that states like Oregon, uh, uh, Washington State, California... They're run by hippie trippy leftists who will not let them use controlled brush burning to reduce the amount of fissionable material that's in laying there out on the hillsides. So you get a drought and it's a tinderbox. Because it's not like in, in, in a state where you t typically like in Vermont, I'll put it this way. State of Vermont. What's a drought in Vermont? Three days without rain. It's constantly raining. I know the Pacific Northwest usually is too, but the West Coast, the, 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 the temperature fluctuations... The weather fluctuations can be more severe. Vermont is in a drought if you go three, four days without rain. Or you have a place like maybe in southern Texas. Okay, it's very, very hot. It's very, very dry. But there aren't a lot of trees. There's not a whole lot of woody brush actually there. You can get grass fires sometime. A grass fire and a, and a brush fire slash forest fire, not quite the same. The grass fire, yeah, it'll still fuck you up, but it'll go past fairly quickly. Most of the structures there aren't even wooden, because why would you want a wooden structure? in a place that's regularly 120 degrees. Uh, think about the difference when you have heavily wooded forest areas um, filling with, with tinder, and then you have a major drought. You get a lot of nice tall pine trees that go up like fucking explosions when the, when the fire hits them, they practically explode. Uh, you've got a huge amount of brush lying around and they won't let them remove it for environmental reasons because the, the uh, three-toed tree frog might uh, go extinct if you remove too many of the fallen pieces of timber and so instead you get billions and billions in damage with 10 percent of a state's entire population displaced and it's not right-wing politicians doing that so uh, that's something maybe other to keep in mind that's about all peace out